One huge thing that the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series GPU are about to upgrade in your life, that's gonna be monitors. More than ever before, you're gonna be able to drive all of these crazy, more high refresh rate monitors than you ever could in the past. Before, they used to be just like magazine builds with big multi-GPU systems. Now, you're actually gonna be able to drive some of these monitors with a single GPU, 3080, 3070, of course, 3090. So let me tell you about some of my monitor recommendations, stuff I've personally used before. That way, I'll be able to give you guys a nice view of what I think is gonna be good. So remember to subscribe smash that like button and let's get into it so gaming monitors are an absolutely essential part of your setup doesn't matter if you have the most awesome gaming PC ever with a 3090 the best processor if you have sort of a not so good gaming monitor with a low refresh rate you're definitely not going to get the best experience first of all not even in Windows as you're like browsing around even a 240 Hertz monitor it does feel better even when you use it in Windows trust me and of course you're going to get a terrible gaming experience because especially if you're playing a fast-paced game you're really not going to be able to take advantage of everything that your system is going to have to offer so with the new nvidia gpus coming out the 30 series the 3090 3080 3070 we're going to be able to use more powerful monitors than we have ever used before so i'm going to go through my personal recommendations on different monitors these are all monitors i've personally owned and used throughout time some i'm still using today we're going to tackle 1080p, 1440p, ultra wide as well as 4k no 8k for now but maybe in the future with a 3090 so let's start at 1080p now before we start that i'm going to preface and say that these new gpus are so powerful that i think 1440p is really going to be the next gold standard right now of course the majority of people of gamers if you look up stats on steam or something like that they play at 1080p and of course it's a little bit cheaper to get into it's more readily available less powerful systems can take advantage of it without bottlenecking nearly as much on higher resolutions but now that we have the 3000 series little by little slowly i think it will start to shift towards 1440p but there's also a very good reason to use 1080p and that's going to be competitive gaming that's the reason why i initially used 1080p monitors there are two main ones that i used and i really liked the first one's going to be the benq 240 hertz refresh rate monitor now one thing that you have to remember about this and the other 1080p uh, monitors that I'm going to be talking about. Their LCD panels are TN um, and they're not going to be IPS like some of the other monitors, meaning that they really have some flat colors. It definitely doesn't visually look anywhere near as good as some of the other panels like an IPS panel would. But the kicker here is that they perform really well. They have very fast response times, low latency. That means when you're playing a game like a first person shooter, I used to play Quake Champions a lot. Um, and that's primarily the reason why I got a 240 hertz monitor. When you're playing a game like that and you're moving around really quick, you're whipping your mouse in every single direction, it really keeps up with your gameplay. And generally I felt that I was just a much better player when I was playing at 1080p very high refresh rate like 240 hertz typically those games you can max out the fps anyway because you're going to be more competitive titles and now with the 3000 series that's even more true Aside from the BenQ monitor, there was a period where I switched around and I tried some of the other ones. Alienware also makes a very good 240 hertz monitor. It's about 25 inches. They actually make two versions of this. One has G-Sync, the other does not have G-Sync. Generally, I would recommend going for the one that doesn't have G-Sync in this case, even though I usually like G-Sync for a monitor like this. Usually you're gonna turn off GSIC anyway because that's gonna give you a little bit of latency. So basically with a monitor like this, you wanna be hitting really high frames, really high refresh rates. G-Sync is when you fall sort of under the monitor's refresh rate and it makes up that difference so you don't get any sort of display issues. For a competitive monitor like this, I think you can do away with the G-Sync version, get the little bit cheaper one. Asus also has their version of the 240 hertz refresh rate monitor. And now this one does come with G-Sync, there's no other option. The BenQ monitor that I mentioned previously doesn't come with g-sync at all um, so basically for this type of monitor i would avoid the g-sync versions i just think they're more expensive and you don't really need it here i think g-sync is going to be a lot more useful at the higher resolutions like 4k and things of that nature 
So right now, if you play competitive games, 1080p, really high refresh rate, I think you're going to be some of your best options. If you're not a competitive gamer, I would look and try to upgrade to a 1440p or maybe even 4K if it fits within your budget. I think you're going to have a lot better of a gaming experience. First, because these really high refresh rate monitors are generally going to be TN panels, like I mentioned. The picture and image quality, while it performs great for gaming, it doesn't really look that good. Like if you're trying to edit a video on it or just browse Windows, colors are definitely a little bit more washed out and if you use a really nice IPS panel so with that in mind I really would only go for 1080p at this point with these GPUs if you're a competitive gamer otherwise I would skip right to 1440p and above and now keep in mind there are 360 Hertz um, refresh rate monitors coming there's one from Asus MSI this was also announced with Nvidia when they announced the new GPUs um, of course I haven't tried any of those yet but that definitely seems pretty crazy 360 Hertz looks to be absolutely amazing if if you're a competitive gamer they have all these other features with really low response times and things of that nature so if you're a competitive gamer and you're looking for a monitor aside from these 240 hertz monitors i would keep an eye on these other 360 monitors coming out see if it falls within your budget and if you're really serious about competitive gaming maybe it's something you'd like to try as well and now let's talk about 1440p generally in the past this was really the sweet spot resolution just because it wasn't as taxing on your gpu you got a little bit better quality graphics with a resolution as opposed to 1080p um, the panels are very high refresh rate you can get 144 hertz some of them you can overclock to the 165 hertz both from asus and acer i've used both versions of these monitors um, they're both pretty fantastic there's not too much of a difference between them i would just choose whichever one you kind of like the aesthetics more of either the acer or the asus a lot of times they basically use the same panels and technology what changes is just sort of the monitor design and the way their menu systems are but for 1440p with a GPU, especially like the 3080. Um, basically, some of the reviews were saying that the 3080 plays 1440p like the 2080 Ti played 1080p. So that's a massive difference. That means that you could literally throw almost any 1440p game at the 3080 and you're going to have pretty colossal performance. Just a little quick note at 1440p. I did read some things about the new benchmarks and reviews. There were more scattered results of 1440p as opposed to the other resolutions. Maybe Ampere isn't 100% optimized yet for that resolution in certain games. So just keep that in mind. I think with time things will get considerably better there's no doubt that the 3080 especially has a lot of power to drive 1440p so if that's your target resolution you should be able to be even a competitive gamer as well as a gamer if you like to have the most intense graphics the highest graphics possible 1440p will definitely do it for you of course as you get into 4k in certain games you really drop a considerable amount of performance and now if you're choosing one of these 1440p displays i would definitely go for the ips version as opposed to the tn panel some of the tn panels may have like a one millisecond response time ips is going to be a little more maybe around four but in my opinion the image quality that you get out of a panel like that is much superior to the tn panel so your games are going to look much better regular windows use will look much better as well and i really think you're not going to notice that small of a difference and if you really think you'll notice a difference you might be better off with one of the sort of the esports competitive 1080p monitors um, then that way you can go flat out and not really have to worry about any of these differences but overall go for an ips panel you're going to have a much better experience. Now let's talk ultra wide monitors. We're going to focus here on the 34 inch monitors. I know there are some other ones that are, are much wider, much bigger. I think 34 inches is sort of the sweet spot. Even that sometimes it takes up a lot of room in your desk. So make sure you have the space for it. There have been times where I wished my X34, the Acer Predator or whatever 34 inch monitor I have was a little bit smaller, like a 27 inch regular monitor. But at other times, having that wide panel is absolutely amazing when you're playing games it's very immersive like if you're playing battlefield 5 or something like that um, you get to feel like you're in the action that's definitely a lot of fun and of course for productivity you can split stuff up on the screen almost like as if you have multiple monitors since it's so wide so in general i think the positives of an ultra wide outweigh the negatives and it's definitely one of my favorite monitor types now let me tell you about some of the ultra wide monitors i've owned and recommend um, right now i'm actually using the acer predator x34 um, this is going to be 120 um, refresh rate it's not nearly as high as the 1440p monitors that have 144 to 165 it's no 
nowhere near as high as 1080p at 240 or even 360, but 140 hertz refresh rate is more than enough for even some mild competitive gaming. Um, you never really notice a difference that much, and having that wide panel makes the gaming experience so much more immersive than anything else. And on the plus side, an ultra wide monitor like this is going to be less demanding on your GPU than something like a 4K monitor, even though a 3080 at this point is more than capable of maxing out even an ultra wide monitor and getting pretty close to it in certain 4K games as well. So the Acer Predator monitor, I think it's really cool. I actually like the design. It's very like futuristic. It is a very game focused design, but I mean, we're gamers, right? So I'm okay with that. It looks pretty cool. Has the RGB lights on the bottom. Um, I've also owned the Asus one in the past. Um, it's basically the same panel that they use. They used to have a version that was 100 megahertz, an older version. Now this one is 120 for the refresh rate. Um, they're both, you know, pretty similar. I think the one at 120, of course, is gonna be better. You're gonna be able to get higher frames per second maxing out the monitor um, and do note that they do make a 200 hertz uh, refresh rate monitor the ultra wide um, there's the x35 um, there's the really expensive one as well with hdr that one costs well over two thousand dollars i haven't personally used that one i have used the 4k hdr which we'll talk about i haven't used the ultra wide one yet but knowing monitors and how fragile they can be sometimes especially if you bump into it by accident i have accidentally broken a monitor like this in fact my alienware 34 inch monitor was broken in this very manner so knowing that i kind of hesitate to buy really expensive monitors because i think a lot of these are a little bit cheaper give you like 99 percent of the experience for considerably less money and talking about the alienware ultra wide that's also a fantastic monitor if you search around a lot of people recommend it it's priced really really well um, it's sort of a toss-up between the acer asus and the alienware monitor they're all about 120 hertz refresh uh, for some reason i always like this x34 monitor i seem to prefer it a little bit more but the alienware Wear is about the same in terms of the quality and everything of that nature. Just remember you should have ample space on your desk for a monitor that's going to be considerably larger than something you may have had before. So now let's get into 4K monitors. This is where the 3080 really starts to shine. Previously, 4K gaming was not really that easy to do. You needed at least a 2080 Ti or a 2080 Super. Now with the 3080, a lot of games are a lot more playable. Um, even Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a little better than it was before. Um, but there are a lot of other games that are very playable at 4K high refresh rates. Um, in the past, I did have a 4K 60Hz Acer Predator monitor. Of course, back then, most GPUs couldn't even get past 48 or 50 frames per second anyway in games like Assassin's Creed. Now that we have 144 hertz monitors, I'm gonna tell you about the two that I've tried. So back when the 144 hertz HDR 4K monitors came out, I picked up one of the Asus monitors. Back then was a little bit of a jump. I mean, it was around a $2,000 monitor. They're a little bit cheaper now. Never a gaming monitor like that with HDR. So the gaming experience was absolutely sublime on that monitor. The Acer Predator as well, very similar. They use the same panel. The only difference, once again, gonna be in the menu system and also in their design. Now, there were a couple of things I really didn't like too much about these 4K monitors. First, both of them had really loud fans that you could hear like all the time. The fans never seemed to really get quiet. I guess it's just a design of the monitor. Um, and the other thing as well, you could never do true 144 hertz because of chroma subsampling. Most of the time, I'd have to set it at like 96 or maybe 120 hertz. Or else, if you do 144, even like Windows starts to look a little funny, like text, it doesn't look right. Um, so that was definitely a little bit of a disappointment because they kind of sold it as like the ultimate 144 hertz monitor so having said that after owning one of those more expensive 4k monitors i don't necessarily recommend it i think there's a much better one um, and this is one that i'm actually using now this is going to be the acer 4k 144 hertz monitor the difference between this one and the previous ones that were two thousand dollars basically it kind of comes down to the nits of the hdr this one has about 400 as opposed to a thousand so it doesn't get nearly as bright but the price is considerably cheaper and you can find it for less than half the price of those more expensive 4k monitors and i think that's a much better value proposition because honestly even after having owned both the more expensive as well as
as the one that's half price in terms of the 4K monitor. There's not that much of a difference at all. Like I could never tell unless they were side by side. Yeah, the other one, the HDR is not nearly as bright, but the image still looks beautiful and I'd much rather pay cheaper. That way, if the monitor ends up breaking or something in the future, it's not as much as a wallop to your wallet as would be like a $2,000 monitor. So for that reason, I think the cheaper one that's 400 nits, I recommend that any day over the other one, um, just because the performance is like 99% there and it's considerably cheaper. You can often find it on sale. Um, it still has that annoying fan though. Um, I don't think it's as loud as the other ones was, so I don't know if it's a little bit newer, they refined it, but you can still hear it. Um, and often it's gonna be one of the loudest things in my system. And then often it's going to be one of the loudest things. In fact, it's on right behind me here and I can hear it. And to the other side is the 240 hertz, the BenQ monitor. Of course, no noise coming out of that one. Most monitors don't have fans, but these 4K 144 hertz monitors do have fans. So just be aware of that um, because it is a little bit louder than you would expect. And then I've never tried it, but I have seen it at like Micro Center, the big 65 inch, you know, the NVIDIA, the BFG display. That one is really expensive when it came out. I think it was around like $5,000 but I've consistently seen it on sale for like the two to three thousand dollar range so I guess if you're in the market for a really big sort of TV that also functions as a gaming monitor those are pretty cool they have high refresh rates they have g-sync they look really really awesome and 65 inch to game at 4k with something like a 3080 I'm sure that's going to be one of the best looking monitors out there as well so to conclude I really think that now with the 3070 80 and 90 we really are starting to get into higher resolution territory where we can more comfortably play games. If you're sort of a gamer that likes to see great graphics, I would do minimum 1440p. Try to get 4K because I think, especially with one of these GPUs, we're getting better and better. A lot of the stress is going to be taken off your CPU as well and put onto the GPU. I would only get 1080p at this point if you're going to be a real competitive gamer and you need that high refresh rate. Otherwise, I would try something like an ultra wide or even 4K. I think you'll be impressed by the resolution. After trying it and you go back to a monitor of low resolution you'll really see what the difference is i think there is a difference there all right guys thank you very much for watching leave a comment below let me know what type of monitor you're planning to get with the 3000 series remember to subscribe smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video